Now let's talk about Ari Emanuel and Vince McMahon, because this was the other big story of the week, which I actually think kind of in a way flew under the radar, even though people were talking about it. This is this is big news here. Endeavor and TKO CEO Ari Emanuel, he was a guest at Bloomberg's Screen Time Conference this week, and he commented on WWE's media rights deals, including SmackDown moving back to USA Network and the ongoing negotiations for Monday Night Raw. He said, we got a 40% increase for SmackDown. We have Raw, which is the number one package available. There's three nights coming available to market, three big rights, WWE Raw, UFC, and the NBA. We are involved in two of them. There's six buyers, plus I would say WWE Network, which is up in 2026. I think I'm saying that, maybe 25 or 26. So you cannot undervalue the WWE and UFC for the following reasons. One, we do not have a season. One of the biggest issues that will happen with S-Mods and Networks is churn. We're 52 weeks a year, right? And we're flexible. You want us Thursday night? You want us Tuesday night? I don't have any of those scheduling issues and that churn issue because we're the full year. It's so much different than any other sport because then people churn out. That's one of the issues with sports, not in a bad way. And then the package is over and then you leave. We do not have that. Our fans are loyal. They stick around and they move. So he is confirming that they are very much open to Raw moving to a night other than Monday, which is something we heard a few weeks ago. Uh, it's not going to be Saturday or Sunday. I mean, if you look at the, the the schedule, right? It's not going to be Saturday. It's not going to be Sunday. I doubt they would want it on a Friday. So that leaves Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Although Thursday, you still have NFL competition for part of the year, if that matters to them. So Tuesday or Wednesday, I think, if not keeping it on Monday, would probably be the likeliest nights. I think we're looking at either Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Raw, or Wednesday Night Raw. And it also depends on where USA decides to put SmackDown. SmackDown is is probably moving away from Fridays. I feel like for the fans, it would be better to put some separation between Raw and SmackDown during the week and not run them on back-to-back consecutive nights. But I could see the logistical advantage in doing so. If they run back-to-back nights, let's say in the same state, but different cities, or maybe in the same building. Maybe they run the same building back-to-back nights. That would make life a hell of a lot easier for the crew, right? And the people who work there. I get that. Where NXT lands, that would be secondary to Raw or SmackDown. I I think the priority for them is, okay, where's SmackDown going to be? Where's Raw going to be? And then they can kind of fit NXT in wherever they can fit them in. Uh, He did not mention NXT in his comments. But again, they're trying to get as much as they can for NXT, whether it be as a standalone property or part of a package deal with Raw. And it sounds like, They're looking at these things separately, but whatever deal they can get, they're trying to maximize the amount of money they can get for NXT. You know, wrestling is unique, and it does have a lot of value to these networks and and these streamers, because you have to imagine that a lot of these streamers, Netflix maybe, Amazon, you know, Apple, they're they're all in the conversation. They bring a lot of value, uh, wrestling does, not only because it's 52 weeks out of the year, but when you have something like these Hollywood strikes that are still going on. I mean, the writer strike is over, but things kind of fell apart this week with the actors. And so it, it almost feels, I think the studios walked away. So it almost feels like we're back to square one. Maybe John Cena can stick around a little bit longer. But you see what's going on with these Hollywood strikes and everything just grinds to a halt. And these networks have to find ways to fill airtime. Wrestling keeps going. Even during the early days of the COVID era, right? When everything else shut down, wrestling kept going. And that's where it really brings value to these partners. Now, he also said, I would say to you, there's plenty of interest in Raw right now. I know people are like, NBC is out of the mix. And that's why the stock went down. So let me stop there. Three weeks ago, that TKO Group Holdings stock, it was valued at $105 a share. That was on September 20th. The very next day, which was the day the deal was announced for SmackDown to move away from Fox and back to USA, the stock closed at $96 a share. As of closing on Friday, the stock is now down to $77 a share. So it has dropped. And Emmanuel explained why he believes the stock price has fallen. He says, I think there's three things that happen. Number one. The reason the stock is down is what the market thought, that Raw was the best package. I thought a 40% increase, which was in line with expectation, was good. Number two, the PFL situation. 
Now that is a reference to the Fight League. There's a Fight League called P. I think it's the Professional Fight League or Fighting League. They sold a minority stake to Saudi Arabia last month, worth a hundred million dollars. So I guess Wall Street didn't like that very much. So that's what he's referring to with the PFL deal. And number three, and most interestingly, he said Vince McMahon could also be partially responsible for the stock drop. He said, in our deal, Vince wanted to be able to put, at any point in time, his stock. Now, I thought that was a misprint when I first read. I wasn't sure what he meant by that, but a put option allows a stockholder to sell a specific amount of stock at a set price within a specified period of time. So he has the ability to sell his stock at any time if he chooses, unlike the other shareholders who are bound by this lockup period, right? All of his shares are listed as for sale. So he cited Vince himself as one reason for the stock decline. We already know in their financial filings that they've admitted that Vince's past issues are a potential liability for Endeavor and for TKO. And that was not the only Vince McMahon Endeavor news this week. This is actually, again, in my mind, a huge story because it affects the on-air product that you and I see. Some people don't care about the stock stuff. Some people don't care about the financial aspects of things. They just want a good show. Well, if that's what you care about, then listen up because this affects you. It affects me and everybody else who watches Raw and SmackDown every single week. And it's very apparent watching Raw and SmackDown this week that we are seeing changes Mike Johnson, in one of his audio hotlines on PW Insider earlier in the week, he was the first one to report, a belief within WWE is that Triple H has basically been, in his words, knighted by Endeavor as the driving force going forward behind WWE Creative, and that he will be the one driving 99.9% of the creative direction of the product from this point on, not Vince McMahon. Vince is still going to be around... Until he sells his stock, so he can offer his suggestions if he wants to. Maybe at the dinner table, sitting down with uh, Triple H and Stephanie on one side and Vince and his uh, Lady of the Week on the other. He can make his suggestions if he so chooses. But Endeavor has put their full faith and trust now in Triple H to take the product in the direction that he sees fit. Justin Barrasso then had a report confirming this on the Sports Illustrated website a few days later. And this is what he had to say. When WWE merged with Endeavor last month, Paul Levesque did not receive a seat on the board of directors, a position that he held prior in WWE. Yet, that has not represented a loss of power. In fact, the opposite has occurred. If you've noticed a change in WWE programming, you are not alone. Levesque, who is WWE's head of creative, has overseen all of the creative on SmackDown and Raw since the merger, which is precisely what his job description entails. The difference is that Vince McMahon, who is synonymous with all things WWE, is no longer directly involved in dictating the weekly creative in the same manner that he once did. McMahon remained executive chairman in WWE, but he no longer possesses majority control of the company. That has allowed for change in the new regime, particularly in the creative department. Multiple contacts within WWE and UFC have confirmed Ari Emanuel, who wields power as the CEO of Endeavor, is behind the change. Emanuel has long been a firm believer that in order for an organization to be as effective as possible, people need to do the job they are assigned. In this case, that approach has empowered Levesque to exert his full influence in the company's creative sphere. No longer the be-all, end-all of WWE, Vince McMahon possesses an ironclad contract that protects him financially, yet not politically. Will he view this as a loss of leverage? His response will be a very telling action. Now, you can excuse me for being skeptical, right? We've been down this road before. We've been burned before. Last August, when Vince stepped away, you could see Triple H's fingerprints all over the product, even at SummerSlam, which was technically the last Vince McMahon book show before he stepped away. Triple H brought Dakota Kai back to the company. He debuted Damage Control, which was an idea Vince had previously shot down. He brought back a lot of names that Vince had cut. He was pushing people on TV that Vince never would have pushed. The shows just had a different vibe to them. It felt like they had hit the reset button in many ways. You know, Raw felt like it had some some real life to it for the first time in years. 
It wasn't as formulaic as it had been for so long. Fast forward not even a full six months, and Vince was sticking his nose in things again. He was back. Like the villain in a slasher movie when you think they're dead, but they're only pretending to be dead. And then comes the horrible sequel. So long as he is the executive chairman and there is still breath in his body, there's always the chance that he finds his way back into the creative process, right? It's like, like a rash on your skin that just won't go away. You put some ointment on it, it clears up, it goes away for a while, and then it comes right back. But for now, you watch those shows this week and you know damn well those were Triple H shows. Nobody can watch Raw and SmackDown this week and not know that Triple H is the one who influenced the direction of those shows and a lot of what we saw in those shows. And Triple H, look, he is not infallible. He is not perfect. He has his flaws too. But the television shows were objectively better when he first took over, if you go back over a year. So this is not just good news. This is great news. Vince McMahon isn't just a detriment to Endeavor. He's a detriment to the product. And the more we hear about stuff like this, the more it sounds to me... Like Vince McMahon got played. He made a power play and it may have blown up in his face. And I don't cry for him because he made a ton of money. Right? Multiple billions of dollars. Right? He, he can pat his tears and wipe his tears away with his billions. But he also craves power. I think with him it's not just about money. I know it's not just about money with him. Money is a big part of it. He wants to make money. But it's not just about money. It's about power. It's about control. It's about being involved. He has exerted control over the creative direction of the product for decades. Thought he would still be able to do it. Ari Emanuel gets the company, the deal goes through, it's finalized, and he tells Vince, you can sit this one out. Vince was playing checkers, Ari Emanuel was playing chess. What a great story, too. If Vince McMahon, he forces his way back in to make this deal in the first place, And ends up getting iced out of the company after all. I love it. I hope it plays out that way. They can make a TV series out of it. One higher up in WWE told Fightful. I think you can take a look at the show. Johnny Gargano is back after his return got nixed. Tegan Knox is on the show. Dragon Lee is all over the program. Carlito is finally factored in after being under contract for months. Cameron Grimes got back on TV. Bronson Reed is winning matches. Tag titles and IC titles are getting long matches to end Raw. I'm not going to say that all of those are direct results of the situation, but all of those parts moving at the same time is a little too much to be a coincidence for me. I mean, just look, just the fact that we got DIY back together. Zia Lee popped up on Raw Monday night. When was the last time she was on a show other than main event? Not only that, look at Raw. Before the show was even over on Monday, they announced five matches for tomorrow night. Five! I sound like King Kong Bundy now. Five! Five matches announced that far in advance. That would not be happening under Vince McMahon's watch. We have Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso. They're defending the undisputed tag team titles against Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Gunther is defending the Intercontinental title against Bronson Reed. Sign me up for that. Rhea Ripley takes on Shayna Baszler. Ricochet takes on Shinsuke Nakamura in a false count anywhere match. And Natty is going to take on Piper Niven. That Raw show last Monday was one of the best Raws all year. 